saw an eight foot tall shadow and I actually ran out of there and ran out towards the back door. Ashmore States, y'all, here we are. All of that paranormal activity could be soaked in the walls of this asylum. Ashmore Estates is 100% haunted. That was creepy. That was very creepy. I'm feeling a presence on my right side, like someone's getting very close to me. I'm close. Oh, it just said I'm close. I feel like I saw my shadow move, but I wasn't moving. If we go back into the kitchen, will we see that eight foot tall shadow? Can you show Dave what happened to you? Ooh. Oh. Behind. Ah. Oh. oh my God. You got room production. Thanks, Joe. All right, Dave, we are in Ashmore, Illinois. And this location is one that we've been looking forward to investigating for literally years. Oh yeah. I can say that this place is out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, nothing but fields surrounding this building. And it is one of the most famous and supposedly one of the most haunted psychiatric hospitals or asylums in the United States of America. Oh yeah, there's a lot of history behind this one. Tonight, we're gonna be investigating the Ashmore Estates. Yes, we are, here we are. And this place was originally a poor farm up until the 1950s, when it was sold by the county to a private psychiatric hospital who then used it to treat and to take care of those afflicted with psychiatric illnesses up until the 1980s. And from what we hear, there was some very tragic things that happened here. And there's a multitude of spirits and people that they believe could still haunt the Ashmore Estates. This is gonna be a good one, I cannot wait. I cannot wait, and we are pulling up. It is right up here on the left. Look at this place. Wow. You can just tell that this place has history, and you can tell that this place has energy. Here we go. Ooh, Ashmore States, y'all, here we are. Here we are. You ready? I am ready. Let's head inside and meet up with a few friends who invited us to investigate here tonight. Let's finally investigate the Ashmore Estates. Let's do it. Let's do it. We were invited here tonight by Amy and Jared of Amy's Crypt to do a special collaboration in what many people believe to be one of the most terrifying asylums in all of Illinois. And while we're here, we'll test out a brand new program that they created that very well could change the paranormal field as we know it. Oh, it's generating, ew, oh God. And there's no better place to do it than here. But Ashmore Estates was not always a psychiatric hospital although the other iterations of this institution were just as tragic. So Ashmore Estates started out as a poor farm. Um, and poor farm basically was anybody that didn't, wasn't able to take care of themselves. Um, this is where they came. So you had um, orphans, widowers who couldn't um, afford to take care of themselves, criminals, um, just basically anybody that society didn't want um, pretty much, this is where they would be. Um, after that, we were a psychiatric hospital and then a nursing home. All right, Dave, we are now inside Ashmore Estates and this place is creepy. The structure that we're in right now was built in 1916, but there were structures here before. This was the Cole County Poor Farm. So we had, you know, 200 acres. We had about 27, 28 buildings. So we had, you know, a school, butcher shop, um, art, you know, activity building. Um, it wasn't just this building. Um, so everybody that was here would have some kind of job because that would be your way, basically your, I guess, payment um, for staying here. They ended up using this until the 1980s, but it was converted into a psychiatric hospital in the 1950s. 
and there's even a room upstairs which we will see where they did electroshock therapy. We use these electrodes. We place them on the patient's head like this. And then by means of this machine, we pass a controlled electric current through the brain. There's a lot to uncover here at Ashmore Estates. Before we get started and go full night vision, we're gonna walk through and take a look and see what we have to work with. Let's do it. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot of history in this place. And like you said, I mean, in the early years, the conditions here were bad, but from what we understand when they rebuilt and started using this building again, conditions improved, but that doesn't erase the emotions and that doesn't erase the bad things that happened here. So that history is still here and it appears that uh, it's led to some hauntings, so. The most common, I would say, shadows on every floor, um, up and down the hallways, walking back and forth between the rooms, whistling. The whistling is a big thing. Um, I've actually heard that on this floor. Things being moved. There's a couple tricycles in the building. We've had those moved. I don't think there's an area in the building that hasn't had stuff happen. Now, this would have been the dining area right here that we're standing in now, and it actually had a kitchen right here as well. But just about a year ago, Ashley, an employee here, had a very creepy experience back here in this kitchen. So the fact that I love this building, it's my home. Um, it's the one place I didn't think I'd ever be ran out of. And about a year ago, I was actually ran out of the kitchen. She says she was standing right here in this doorway about 10 o'clock in the morning, cleaning up after a group had investigated. And she said as she was cleaning, she heard a movement coming from right over here behind you, Dave. And I saw basically like an eight foot tall shadow figure. And I heard the footsteps, I could feel the footsteps, and it sounded like he basically had concrete boots on and like he was gonna run through me and throw me across the room. And I actually ran out of there and ran out towards the back door. I noticed something while reviewing the footage of our conversation about Ashley's experience in the kitchen, something that Dave didn't see in the moment. When I turned my head, on the side of my neck are three distinct scratches. I have no idea how these scratches got on my neck, and we have no footage of me scratching myself. It may not be paranormal, but for documentation's sake, I have to point it out. Now they have no idea what that eight foot tall shadow was that she saw, but maybe we can come in contact with that tonight. Hopefully that would be, uh, <laughs> as I turn around there, that kind of freaked me out, but uh, <laughs> it would be very interesting to come across an eight foot tall shadow in here. Uh, that would be terrifying. So if anybody sees it, hopefully it's you. Throw me under the bus. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> That eight foot tall shadow, they don't know why it's here, but there is a spirit who they do have very interesting encounters with right across the hall here, that they do know who he is. And he's one of the more famous and notable spirits of the Ashmore estate. So let's go to the boiler room, talk about Joe. Joe Bloxham, he was here during the poor farm. Um, he was mentally challenged um, and they gave him jobs um, here to kind of make him feel like he had a purpose. He had a half sister who he would visit and on one of his trips on the way back he was hit by a train. He did manage to make it back to the building and unfortunately passed away. People believe that Joe never left and that Joe is very protective of this building and he doesn't like people in this room apparently. He feels like this is his space and especially women and that's kind of interesting because being here tonight with Amy and Jared, I'll be interested to see what happens whenever Amy comes down here and to see if Joe lets her know that he's here or maybe that he's not happy with her presence in this area. I was actually pushed down those stairs once. <laughs> um, I've had a couple other ladies who have been in there who have said they've been touched or scratched. And I think the reason he doesn't like women down there because the room before that would have been the men's dining room during that time. So women wouldn't have been allowed in there. And that's all attributed to this man, to Joe. So Joe, if you're here and you wanna to talk to us and speak to us tonight, 
There are four of us here. There's myself, Ryan, this is Dave, and then our friends, Amy and Jared, will be here with us in the building tonight. So, feel free to come out and speak to us. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah, this, this room right here definitely has a vibe to it. It does. I mean, we have tons of spirits here um, that we probably don't know their names, um, but we also do have a lot of kids too. Um, especially, I think the kids are the ones that play on the stairs a lot and set off the lights, like the motion lights, which you guys will probably see at some point because <laughs> that happens a lot. Um, I think they're the ones that tend to do that. All right, so coming into this corridor here, you have what I believe is a nurse's station. Whoa. And did you hear that? Camera. Huh, maybe it was the camera. I have yeah. to review that and listen to it again, but sorry, go ahead. was like from over here. Huh, maybe it was the camera. I have yeah. to review that and listen to it again, but. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Did it sound like a little girl? It was like. <laughs> it was very, very subtle. <laughs> so I hope that one of our mics picked that up. I hope so too. But that is a good, that is an interesting experience already because, I mean, all these toys that are scattered here throughout Ashmore Estates, I mean, they believe multiple children haunt this place, but the one that is the most famous is a young girl named Elva Skinner. So Elva Skinner, um, she was actually in the original Poor Farm building, so the first one that was built around 1870. She was about 10 days before her fifth birthday. She was up getting ready for breakfast one morning and her dress unfortunately got a little too close to a candle and caught on fire and she ended up dying from burns. So she is here in the building. She likes lights, so things that light up, things that make noise, but she's all over the building. She doesn't stay in just one place. People hear and see from her all the time here inside Ashmore Estates, and she's been known to interact with toys, interact with flashing balls, lights, equipment, all stuff that we're gonna be setting up here. Yeah, I hope that we get to come in contact with her a little bit tonight. I don't know if that laugh was her or not. Obviously, I don't know what she sounded like when she laughed, but uh, that was creepy. That was very creepy. So Elva, if you're here tonight, don't be afraid to come out and talk to us, okay? A lot of people don't like the third floor. During the psychiatric hospital, that's where they would have kept the worst patients, would have been on the third floor. Um, and a lot of times people feel very heavy up there. Um, a lot of shadow play up there. Uh, <laughs> strange. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut that door. We saw nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we have to remember that during the time that this was Ashmore Estates, when this was a psychiatric hospital, there would have been patients that were brought here that probably would not have known what was happening, what was going on. Um, some of the more severe mentally ill individuals that were kept here, they probably had a severe or even a strong fear of what was happening to them, why they were here, what was happening, why they couldn't go home. And all of that residual energy, along with some of the intelligent paranormal activity, could be soaked in the walls of this asylum. You know, replaying itself. That sadness could still be here. Make sure you do outside as well. We used to do open houses, and we actually had a lady come through who actually lived here. Her uh, mom and dad were actually the superintendents, and they lived up on the third floor. And when she was a little kid, she remembers going across um, to this, the north side of the building, looking out in the fields, 
and she remembers seeing somebody out there digging at night. And when she was a kid, she never, you know, thought about it or knew what they were doing until she got older and kind of put two and two together and realized that they were probably out there digging graves. So we're pretty sure that there's probably bodies buried out there in the fields. So you walk into this room and of course you have all the general furniture and stuff, but there are parts of this building that have been changed since its time as a psychiatric hospital even. And actually from what they said, there was a wall right here that sectioned off this side of this room as its own separate room. And they say this was the electroshock therapy room. People believe that paranormal activity is made up of energy. People believe that paranormal activity can create this electricity, EMF energy. So what happens when electricity is applied to the brain, to the consciousness of a human being? Could that in and of itself create a charge of possible future paranormal activity? I guess we're gonna find out tonight. The people that had to go through this obviously was not a fun thing for them to go through. It was probably very traumatic if they even knew what they were about to walk into. So it's just, I don't know, there's probably a lot of energy in this area right here if this is in fact where that took place. Yeah. Ashmore Estates is 100% haunted, in my opinion. I always tell people, I, I'm not here to prove to them that it's haunted, because I know it is. Um, I always tell people, come in with an open mind and see what you get. But what do you think, Dave? Should we get out the equipment, switch over to night vision, and see what happens on our investigation tonight of Ashmore Estates? I am, in fact, ready. Let's head downstairs get some equipment, throw some batteries in it, and head back out into Ashmore Estates here and see if we can make any communication with some of the former residents here. Let's do it, and remember guys, make sure you head over to Amy's Crypt and watch their video because it's gonna be different from ours. We're gonna be splitting up, investigating different parts of this building. You don't wanna miss what Amy and Jared capture on their investigation. That being said, let's do it. So we're getting ready to start the first session here at Ashmore. Amy and Jared went up to the upper floor, to the third floor. They're gonna do an Estes session up there and our thoughts were, when you watch their video, you'll get to see them do an Estes on the third floor. We're gonna do an Estes in the boiler room and try and communicate with Joe and see what happens. So I'm gonna sit here back in the maintenance area. Dave's gonna be out in the boiler room and also maybe up and around that first floor area. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and Put these headphones on and... Yeah, so Dave is getting ready to set up on his camera. I'm gonna go ahead and... Sweet. You good, Ry? Yeah, I'm good. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Headphones going on. Can you hear me? Water. Water. Joe, we've come here to try and make communication with you tonight. My name is Dave, and that is Ryan in there, in your workshop. He is listening to a radio with headphones on, and believe it or not, you can use that to talk to him. So could you go down there and say hello to him through the headphones, through the radio? You don't have to be afraid of What us. do you want? Whew, that scared me. We just want to talk. Is that okay? Yes. yes. What is your name, please? Tell me your name. I just heard a lady's voice. Oh. Coffin. And then a man came through and said something about the sun. Ma'am, who are you? What is your name? What happened? 
I'm not sure. To us, you've passed away. You're no longer living. I'm back now, or we're back now. Okay, who are you? If you're just now back, you may not have heard me, but Ryan has a radio, and he can hear you talking to him. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's pretty neat how that works, huh? What did you do here at Ashmore? There are eight. There are eight of you? Joe, did you get... Did you get hurt somewhere? What happened to you? What happened to Joe? The same woman's voice keeps coming through. It's kind of creepy. What is your name, ma'am? I set one of my pieces of equipment on one of the pieces of the boiler down there. Can you try and touch that? Can you try and touch that piece of equipment down there? I brought it for Hold. you. I brought it for you. Hold. Did you like working down there in the boiler, Joe? Answer. Answer. We heard something happen to you and you ended up losing your life. What happened? Ma male voice, hello. Drawing. Hi. Drawing. Can you please come through and answer some of my questions? My friend Amy is here. Is it okay if she comes down into the boiler room? Oh. Be behind. <gasps> Dude, no way. I just... And then a woman said, you'll hear it. I heard something behind me there. And he said, behind, and you'll hear it. Oh. Be behind. <gasps> Dude, no way. I just heard and then something. And a woman said, you'll hear it. Whew, that freaked me out. Who's over there? What's your name? The universe. What you heard. Same woman's voice. Did I hear you? Is that what the noise was? I'm sorry for freaking out. It just startled me. Ooh, that was a creepy, that was a creepy, creepy man's voice. Choices. And then a woman said, choices. Can you roll that wheelchair towards me? Are you able to do that? I want to come. <laughs> Can you push that wheelchair over here? Sure. Somebody over here in this room in front of me was making some noises and that's fine. But can you tell me your name? I'm feeling a presence on my right side like someone's getting very close to me. Who is that down there by Ryan? More. You're allowed to... I said more. You're allowed to be down there. I'm close. Oh, it just said I'm close. Oh, sh**. Who? Oh, man. Oh, that scared me. No. Who? I thought I saw something in front of me. Who with the blindfold on, like it went really dark. It said I'm close. 
Play. Play, are you playing? Play now. Oh. Possessed. Possessed. I couldn't understand this response in the moment because it sounds like two different voices speaking at once. But on review, you can hear what the voices are saying. Right after Ghost Tube says, Play. Play, are you playing? It sounds like two voices come through the spirit box at once. One of them saying, Play. And a more staticky voice saying, Play now. Play now. Play now. Oh. So the question is, who wants to play? Possessed. Possessed. It's getting really cold in here. Are you a negative energy? Are you a negative spirit? Are you the eight foot tall shadow? Oh, that was a creepy man's voice. It sounded like it said, save him. I don't like this, you guys. I don't like this at all. Whew, I feel like someone's standing right behind me. Are you standing behind Ryan? Joe, is that you? If it's not Joe, tell him what your name is, please. Oh. Same man's voice. Very raspy voice. Hide them or hide him. Are you the eight foot tall shadow that's seen in here? Are you the one that chased Ashley out of here? Woman said bye. Are you able to come and go as you please? It's going very quiet, you guys. The voices have pretty much stopped completely, which is very weird. Ryan. Did you say my name? Yes. Okay. I thought I heard it, but I didn't quite. Was any of that relevant? <laughs> there was uh, some strangeness with that. Not a lot, but what was relevant was weird. I can't wait for you to <laughs> see that later because that was pretty weird. For our second session, we'll go up to the third floor while Amy and Jared take over the boiler room to see how Joe reacts to Amy's presence. If you'd like to see what happens, you can find it on the Amy's Crypt YouTube channel by clicking the link in the description. But for our session on the third floor, we'll do an SLS sweep to see if the camera detects any human-shaped anomalies in the part of Ashmore Estates that was reserved for the worst behaved patients. While we get the SLS camera set up downstairs, we leave our equipment and static cameras alone up here to see if anyone takes interest before we arrive. All right, so we are going to split up once again. Ryan and I are gonna go up to the third floor and we're going to do an SLS sweep of that floor and see what we can come up with. And we're gonna meet up with Amy and Jared here in just a little bit. Yeah. You ready to head up? Yeah, let's, let's go. go up. Dave's running the SLS camera tonight. The third floor, of course, is where the electroshock therapy took place.
All right, you ready? I'm ready. Now we have, we added the paranormal music box to the mix right over here. We have an audio recorder set up right in between on this chair, right in between that and the REM pod. So that audio recorder is gonna pick up the sound of both of those going off or possibly a spirit voice, an EVP, electronic voice phenomena. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if any of these go off or maybe we capture the voice of one of the many spirits here at Ashmore Estates. I've got a camera here. If anyone would like their photo taken, could you stand right in front of me here? I'd love to be able to take your picture for you. Can we come into your room here? Stand in front of Dave. He'll be able to see you and he'll be able to take your picture or your portrait. Oh, I've got cold chairs. Clear. Comfort. Clear. You have cold chills? I do. We know that you know how to use all of these devices that we've got. So if you're here, could you try? George. Sandy. Could you try and set one of them off? <laughs> what? That was the weirdest possible way for it to say cupcake. Mmm, cupcake. This is the electroshock room. This is? This is the electroshock room. Is there anybody in here getting a treatment? Is that you? What? I don't know, I heard Picture. The... Rigid. Dude, it just said picture. Since we walked up here, we've been asking them if they want a picture. Yeah. Is that you? Yes. Would you like a picture? Stand in front of Dave. He'll take your picture. If there are any children here, Elva or any of the other kids, we put a flashing toy on the tricycle out there. Do you want to? Go over and touch it and make the lights turn on. Can you try and push that tricycle for us? It's right there in the hallway. It's easy to push. You're gonna sit on the original bed. I wanna try. I wanna try to lay on it. I forgot this was in here. This is an original bed from Ashmore Estate. Yes. From when this was a psychiatric hospital. Yeah. Lord knows I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> the bed or a psychiatric hospital? Both. <laughs> there's anyone in here. Can you go stand beside Dave on his left hand side? I've got a chair here if you'd like to come sit down. If there's anybody up here on this floor with us, I'm inviting you to come into this room and talk with us. We might not have introduced ourselves to you up here, but my name is Dave and this is Ryan. We've traveled a long way to come speak to you. Don't be afraid to come in and talk to us. We'd love it if you could walk 
from the common room, the day room, and come down this way if you can. Hmm. It's eerily quiet up here. Yeah. Yes, it is. So we've been up here for about 35 minutes at this point. None of the equipment has gone off. I mean, we have motion sensors, proximity meters, EMF detectors, the paranormal music box. Nothing has gone off. We haven't heard anything. We haven't seen anything. We haven't even felt a presence up here since we got up here. The SLS camera hasn't picked up any unexplained figures. So the third floor seems absolutely dead silent to us right now. Ashley said that they get activity outside. Yeah. Do you think for the next session, just to see what happens, maybe we should grab the thermal camera and step outside? Let's do it. Let's do it. Unfortunately, our thermal camera's battery was dead from the cold, so we can't use it. So instead, we decided to go outside with Amy and Jared as a group to do a ghost tube seer session. And we decide to set up right where the staff believes there may be unmarked graves. For this session, Dave will be watching the image generated by seer through the ghost tube lens, a virtual reality headset that takes this experience to a whole new level. We also did a seer session for the Amy's Crypt channel where I wore the lens. So if you wanna see that, you know where to find it. But exactly how does Ghost Tube Seer work? Let's find out from one of the creators. So you can use Seer without the lens. Basically, it's picturizing uh, environmental data that the phone picks up on. Uh, so you can think of it as a lot of other devices, things like the Ovilus or our other apps, uh, Ghost Tube Original but it's creating an image, which is something that's never been done before. We've kind of integrated uh, elements of VR and sensory deprivation into that experiment. So you can wear ghost tube lens. Uh, you're basically watching repetitive noise unless an image is generating. And the thought is to kind of like deprive you of your other senses so that you can uh, fixate and focus on something just purely visual and information that you're being fed. I'm sorry, but did this just get really dark out here? Did a light just turn off? I'm not sure I was looking at the screen. I saw a light turn off then too. I just felt like things got really dark out here. A light just turned, something just turned off. Yeah, all this, there, there must have been a light on over here and it's just been switched off or something. Hmm. Weird. And we've had good results with it so far. We've also been mixing it with things like, uh, sort of like a, doing an Estes while watching but i think it's cool to do it without where you can hear and you can give the live feedback in the moment or ask questions yourself while using ghost tube lens look down to proceed okay okay then you need me to go to see a session and then start recording straight away okay then you're good okay recording now Okay, if there's anybody out here that can hear my voice, we're very friendly people. There's an image already of two angels in the sky oh. um, flapping their wings. Um, Are they wearing anything? Just like angel bodies. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but one of them, they have hair. And they're all, they're flying in the sky. Hmm. Maybe that could be symbolic. It is um, Easter currently today. I yes. don't know if that's like a religious thing that would tie into that. But thank you if there's somebody around. Um, I don't know if you are tied to the building behind us that we've been in all night. Or if there's anyone else out here maybe lost, we'd love to interact. Can you show yourself to us? Can you give us a clue as to who you are? You just need to go up to this man with a funny thing on his head. He won't hurt you, I promise. 
You guys, this is, for anybody watching, this is so freaking cool. You have to, you have to try this. It is so cool. Can you show us what used to be out here on this ground, on this land? We have these lights right here. If anyone wants to walk up and touch them, that's how they work. And then after that, show Dave what used to be out here, like Amy said, what used to be here. Yes, by the way, my name is Dave. And these are my friends here, Amy, Ryan, and Jared, if I'm pointing in the right area. <laughs> but You're pretty much you dead on. Good, yeah. <laughs> Is anyone else getting really off vibes out here? I kind of feel like we're being watched out here. If Agreed. That, if that makes sense. <laughs> I just had something really weird happen and I'm like... What? I'm like, do I share this? Because it's, it's going to sound nuts. Here we go, here we go. Oh. I just looked over here and I my own shadow was like this. Like your own... Like, I feel like I saw my shadow move but I wasn't moving. And I don't even actually think it was like, I don't know. I'm seeing... I just felt like an arm came up that I didn't do. <laughs> what are you seeing, Dave? A big green eyeball. Is there somebody right here? No. I totally feel somebody right here. That's where I just seen. That is exactly where Amy was pointing about her shadow. Really? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, you can't see our shadows on the infrared. Well, <sighs> and it's gone. Was it a trick of my own eye, though? Do you know what I mean? Like, and you just said you feel like we're being watched. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is definitely creeping me out, though, out here. And it's gone. Can you come towards our voices? Can you hear us? We want to know about your life. We want to know about who you were, what you did. We'd love to hear your story of you and your life. Okay, we're generating. Thank you. Oh, we've got a, like a bouquet of roses. We've got a white rose, a red rose. Thank you for showing us that. Okay, it's gone. Who do the flowers belong to? Can you show us that? How are you feeling doing it, Dave? Uh, honestly, this... I mean, I've been doing this since 1999. And this is one of the coolest things I've ever done. This is really cool. That's exciting. Is Elva here? Elva, can you show Dave what happened to you? Or show Dave what your favorite toy was? Guys? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you just got, all got very quiet. Okay, we're generating. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, God, that's creepy. There's three dolls. A doll wearing a red dress, a doll with pink hair wearing a green shirt, and a doll with red hair wearing a purple dress. And the doll in the middle with the pink hair is looking at the woman in the blue dress. There's a woman in a blue dress? Or a doll in a blue dress, rather. Oh. Didn't I ask for her to show yeah. her favorite toy? Yeah, there's did, three actually. dolls. Yeah. This is the first ghost tube seer image that's come through with direct relevance to a request or question. What are the chances but after I asked Elva. Is Elva here? Elva, can you show Dave what happened to you? Or show Dave what your favorite toy was? That the environmental data collected by GhostTube would generate this image of three dolls. Ooh. And this image alone is somewhat terrifying. But when you take the question into consideration, it makes it so much more chilling. And this won't be the last image of relevance. Soon, will be shown an image that still leaves us speechless. Is okay. We'll have to go inside and see if there's any yeah. dolls like that.
Alpha, we would love to play, or if there's a, any other children here, we would absolutely love to play dolls with you. I definitely would. Can you show us what happened to Joe? Or Elva? Come on, Joe, I thought uh, we were friends now. Could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I thought I just saw shadows going across the field back there behind Amy. Like, way back. There's definitely, like, movement out here, and I'm, I feel like... I'm hallucinating or something. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought. I'm like, I don't want to keep saying I'm seeing stuff out here, but for reals. It could just be pareidolia with my eyes. Like visual matrixing, because those lights are flickering slightly. But I... What was that? You heard that. Yeah. Where did you go? Can you show Dave just one more image to help us understand who you are? Or show me, show me, oh, it's generating, ew, oh God. <laughs> There's a, a man, a young gentleman with a very large, uh, mustache. Oh, I thought you were going to say something <laughs> kind of <insane>. Jared, <laughs> mind you out the gutter. <laughs> large mustache, okay. A large mustache that's twinkling. Could this be Joe? Could be, but why Jay. was that ew? Well, because I thought it was a slug at first. <laughs> 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 You'll see what I is there, do you have any other? Ah, oh, oh, oh my God. God. We've got room action. Thanks, Joe. Joe, is that you? Let's, let's keep Maybe going. Maybe we shouldn't laugh at his appearance, guys. Just saying. Oh, wow. wow. Now it's all happening. Joe, is that you? Joe, can you come a little bit closer to where I'm standing? Move to the next red light. Thank you for doing that. really going off now isn't it yeah whichever spirit i'm speaking to can you show me your best representation of what death is like and what we see and experience after we die can you show that to me what is the last thing that you saw as you were dying Okay, we're generating. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Uh, what do you see? It's still building. It looks like... Oh, it's kind of like morphing faces and a morphing, like a wall. Are you showing me like everybody that was in your life that flash, I don't know, before your eyes as you were dying? There's one, two, three, four, five people, a wall. It's just, it, I feel like I'm just sitting here or laying here and all of these people are watching me. Wow. Were these the people that were around you as you were passing? Naturally, looking at this image, Dave's eyes were drawn to the polymorphic faces on the left. They're unsettling and creepy. But analyzing this image fully after the fact, we noticed something in the background. David just asked Joe to show us the last thing that he saw before he passed. One of his trips on the way back, he was hit by a train. What is the last thing that you saw as you were dying? When we exported this full image from Seer, we can see that the background shape to us almost resembles the front of an old steam engine exiting a tunnel with blood covering the ground in front of it. Do you see this as well? The image is very surrealistic, so it's very hard to tell. But knowing Joe met his end by being hit by a train, this image 
sends chills up our spine. Ooh. But like, Ooh. okay, so show me the last thing that you saw before you died. That's All the people oh around him. That's yeah. freaky. So with that, we are gonna head back inside. Dave finished the seer session. And if you wanna see what I saw through the lens, make sure you go over to Amy's crypt and you watch us investigate the second floor and do our another seer session with the lens. So, but we're gonna head back inside, do one more session in the building. Whoa. Hello? Whoa. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Is there someone touching that green light right there? If you are, can you touch it again for us? That was odd. Hmm. Do you like that thing that makes all the lights? So we're now on the basement level of the Ashmore Estates and we are down in the kit. Thank you. Can you touch the one in the kitchen in here too? It's red, red light, it's on the floor. We talked to Ashley and Ashley said she saw an eight foot tall shadow move through this room. Are you an inmate here at Ashmore? What if I put this right here? Whoa. Can you push that right off of that table? Can you push it right off of there? Whoa. We hear a noise down here and then all of a sudden we turn away and... Go for it, push it off of there. Joe? Joe, if that's you, can you light that up one more time for us? Thank you. Whoa, I heard that. That was loud, that was like behind you. Yeah. You sitting in that chair in the corner? Should we go back into the kitchen? If we go back into the kitchen, will we see that eight foot tall shadow? I'm gonna walk back 
back in here. Okay. Whoa. Literally as soon as you went to walk back there. Do you not want us to go back in there? If you don't want us to go in there, make it light up all the way. If you don't want us back here, come through this box and tell us. I'm standing right where Ashley was standing when she saw that tall shadow. Who is that? What is your name? What was that? That was like a loud thumping sound over here. We continued this spirit box session for another 20 minutes. And in that time, no voices came through. The paranormal tripwire, EMF lantern, and REM pod never triggered. Ashmore Estates is a legendary haunted location. The stories of paranormal activity here have kept investigators traveling to rural Illinois for over a decade. And even though over 50% of our investigation was almost silent, we left with some peculiar experiences. Oh, be behind. Dude, no way, I just- And then a woman said, you'll hear it. Oh, oh, oh my god! We got room production. Thanks, Joe! Joe, is that you? One thing's for sure, the history of this building still speaks. And those who still call this place home want their story to be heard. Yeah, I, I am thrilled that we got to come here to Ashmore. A big thank you to Amy and Jared for for letting us join them here tonight and check out Ghost Tube Seer and all of the very cool things that come along with that. It's been a privilege. It has been, it very much has been. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That helps us more than you know. And if you liked what you saw here today, make sure you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more paranormal content from all over the world at some of the most haunted places, if you wanna come along with us on our paranormal quest, Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. Leave us a comment down below about your favorite part of the location, favorite part of the episode, or if you saw something that we missed. One last thing, head on over to Amy's Crypt, watch their episode, because there are parts of their investigation that you didn't see in our video. We'll see you next time, guys, on our next adventure, on our next video, on this paranormal quest.